Well, big data has a number of definitions. The most obvious is that uh, it's very large. But actually, the common definitions include things uh, like uh, it's very variable, it comes through at high speed, large volume, and uh, sometimes of questionable veracity. In other words, it's not always clear that individual data points uh, uh, really represent anything informative. But there are good examples in commerce, uh, in banking, and in other industries where even apparently uh, scruffy, uh, dirty data can be uh, used to produce real insights uh, into uh, patterns of behaviour. So our challenge in the Big Data Institute is to use those sorts of methods uh, and apply them to med medical research, trying to identify genetic, environmental, behaviour uh, causes of diseases and the, and the uh, development of those diseases, progression of those diseases over time, uh, and the uh, effect, both good and bad, of any treatments uh, that we might want to uh, apply. Common examples would include areas such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, infection and antimicrobial resistance, uh, cognitive uh, decline and dementia, and the list goes on and on and on. We're closely connected to the healthcare system, including uh, here in Oxford, uh, where a partnership with the local hospital, uh, a teaching hospital and a tertiary referral centre uh, is really embedded around uh, shared informatics, bringing data together from the clinical world into the research side and research findings from the research side back into the clinical world. Further afield, we have partnerships with uh, Stanford University in uh, Silicon Valley in the United States and with Vanderbilt uh, University uh, in Nashville thinking about how we can best analyse routine clinical data, imaging data uh, and data on activity and other aspects. Within Oxford we are very uh, privileged in that we have access to some of the world's largest clinical data sets. An example would be UK Biobank. We've left the, led the health informatics programme behind UK Biobank since its inception over a decade ago. That includes over a thousand uh, pieces of information about people's lifestyle and behaviour. It includes dietary information across 200,000 people. It includes information on uh, reasons why people went to hospital. There's over one million of those. It includes information on their ge genetic uh, data. So something like 70 uh, million genetic pieces of information per person. And we have data on uh, the, their levels of activity as well as on their cognitive functions. We have a broad range of data and over the coming uh, five years we'll be scaling that up to also include um, uh, large-scale imaging data of the brain, of the heart, of the body and that will give us really new insights onto the relationship between anatomy, function and disease alongside what the determinants of those things might be genetics, environmental and behaviour. Other studies would include the China Kadori Biobank, another study of a half a million people, or the Million Women study, which actually has uh, 1.3 million women who have been followed up uh, for 15 years now. And we have uh, routine uh, data, actually for the Oxfordshire region, about 3 million people, all the way back till 1963. So that gives a really powerful long-term uh, ability to look at changing patterns in disease over time and try to understand the causes and consequences of disease.